I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. And welcome to you. Now, as I say, I owe all my subscribers, viewers, and indeed those posting comments on my channel a heartfelt apology. Please accept it, I'm sorry. You see, I've allowed pride and my ego to influence my vlogs and indeed my response to comments. For around another month and even further into my Shams al Marish series, I too often allow my ego to come to the fore, for which I profusely apologise. Too often I identify with a group, e.g. Kajawan or Sufi, and use that to criticise other groups. So, heartfelt apology. Please forgive me. Uh, the challenges. I understand that for me, and for all of us, to get closer to God, we must suppress our egos. Uh, but as soon as I have some success in suppressing my ego, it reasserts itself through another challenge, and that's its very neat nature. You see, the ego is constantly seeking to differentiate and to separate itself. Uh, for some 20 years, I was abused by a psychopathic covert narcissist. It's taken me some time to heal from this, and, and maybe, you know, I still haven't completely. You see, I identify with being an empath, and I took it upon myself to expose narcissists, particularly on this platform, often behaving cruelly towards them. Indeed, even in joining in, in arguing with them, using my every trump card, calling out them as narcissists. Now, part of my reason for doing it is, as you know, I meditate five times a day. And during one of my meditations, I went in, well, I opened a door, a portal, if you like. And there was a group of Arab looking men seated around a long table. Indeed, they very much resembled Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper. And now I'm guessing this reflects my Western and largely Christian upbringing. Certainly I'm not trying to claim that I've met with Jesus and his disciples. But this group did ask me to speak my truth. And I have to confess that in doing so, I've been a little overzealous. As you'll be aware, since arriving in Indonesia, I've been very troubled by black magic. Indeed, some four years ago, my wife lost her mind as a result, and it's taken a very long time for her to recover. Her eldest brother, Adukan, has been the main source of the mischief. Certainly her losing her mind. Although for me in particular, it's our neighbours in Jakarta who've been more problematic. Now I'm not saying that I don't feel her brother's mischief, nor does she not feel our neighbour's mischief. Um, but one seems to more target her and the other me. Uh, one neighbour in particular sits outside our home often all day and all night casting spells against us. Now he sometimes sleeps in a cemetery and so the main problem appears to have been with dead spirits or ghosts if you like which I don't see as being as troublesome or as dramatic as magic from the Duke and brother which as I say caused my wife to lose her mind but when you know that he's been sitting outside our house casting spells at us for some 12 years. I'm fed up. Yeah, I'm fed up with getting con conjunctivitis, fed up with Singapore ear, fed up with rheumatism, fed up with having to constantly keep my vibrations high. I, I, I guess you're asking why is he doing it? Well, he's actually quite a well-educated man. He was a teacher, but now he he, he doesn't work much. He, he, he does have an unofficial status 
as being the village leader for our our camping in Jakarta, but he isn't meant to get paid for this, although he does make money from it, to be honest. But yeah, he doesn't have a great deal of money, and apparently the house that we bought and live in originally was owned by his wife's family. And I think he, he honestly believes that he can get the house back by frightening its inhabitants off. And indeed, we're the first people to have stayed here more than five years than after his wife's family sold it. So, really, he's got nothing else to do and nothing else to lose. A bit like me continuing to create YouTube videos, even though, you know, I've been doing it a long time, putting a lot of time into it, and I'm yet to make any money at all. But what else am I to do? Again, whilst using love to overcome these challenges, it leaves me to believing that I'm in some way superior to those who are using black magic against me. Even this last sentence betrays how I'm allowing the ego to keep coming back in. You see, I said I, when my goal is to not identify with I. Now, I hardly use social media, so when I started posting comments, some vlogs on YouTube, I was not prepared for the attacks I got, nor the brutality of the attacks, something that you know I've spoken about many times. Too often I've simply argued with others, believing myself to be superior. In particular, my series on Shams al Marif is an obvious provocation to some of those with, within the Salafi movement. The more they've posted their views, the more entrenched mine have become. One attacked one of my subscribers, Blaze, Blaze Windsword, and the effect is to make me identify more with Sufism and see this as being in opposition to Salafism. Now, you may well know that I've spent most of my life in Manchester and I'm a Manchester Blue, I support City. And, you know... Our dislike for Manchester United is famous. But you know, it's all a bit of fun. And religion shouldn't be like that at all. Yes, the critique by the Salafis is a thinly veiled attempt to discredit Sufis and Salafis. And I, I do comment on this fa fair bit, and I do believe it is. But just that because they've declared war on Sufis, and therefore who I identify with, i.e. me, should not, does not mean that I should join in the fight. So if I'm a little too zealous in promoting the Sufi cause in my Shams al Marif series, will you please forgive me? Please? Identity. Identity of politics appears to have been purposely constructed and indeed fueled to create factions, almost certainly the intention to divide and rule. When I look at the collapse of politics and with it democracy in the United States, I despair at appears, what appears to be a purposeful strategy by some, but it's not for me to discuss who those some are, certainly not in this vlog. But the political arguments have descended into calling one or another group communists or fascists, when to my mind they blatantly aren't either. Why am I so concerned about identity? Well, to identify with one group or another is to reassert the ego, uh, for there is no identity if there is no I. So when a Salafi accuses my viewers and I of Sihir, sorcery or shirk, polytheism, indeed some will even suggest that I am not even a Muslim. They believe that they have an obligation to get fellow Muslims to see what they see as the original pure form of Islam at the time of the Prophet. But the argument's just banal and unfounded. And it's so much so that it simply confirms my identity as a Sufi. And of course, he is the trap for in identifying as a Sufi. It reasserts my ego 
and, and, and this is the opposite to what being a Sufi is all about. No, a Sufi should describe themselves as a Sufi. And, and should not describe themselves as a Sufi. Simply Muslim. However tempting it is to be. I should here thank another subscriber, Ryan Hampton. Because he explained to me that he was a Sufi and asked what, what I was. And this allowed me to consider the destructiveness of the end identity and how I've fallen into its trap. Uh, when you unpack the arguments of Sufi, against Sufis, they've no foundation whatsoever. Even their most virulent beliefs appear to be miscons a misconstrued rewriting of the history of Islam. For example, they claim to be going back to <coughs> the simplicity of how Islam was followed by Muhammad and his original followers, Tablighi, when all the evidence suggests that theirs was closest to, the, to what we now call the Sufi path. It's as though the arguments have been created by a PR expert to undermine Sufism, as though they don't care about the truth. A truth which is of paramount importance to us Sufis. Uh, but to engage in these arguments undermines our very path as a Sufi. And herein lies the temptation. When you see a way through the argument, you're tempted to use it. Uh, just as the ultimate sanction of the Salafis is to selectively quote <coughs> from Al-Quran or a Hadith often in English translation. But within Al-Quran, just like the Bible, you'll always find a contradictory argument, particularly if you're using a translated version of Al-Quran, because it's more about the translation than what Al-Quran actually said. So trading quotes from the scriptures achieves nothing at all. It only reasserts the ego as we feel superior and victorious in winning the argument. And You know, you, you might notice videos on this very platform of street preachers, probably in my own country, probably from the Tablighi Jumat sect. And, you know, there's a, there's a sense of superiority when they can find the relevant scripture to defeat the person they're arguing with. It's the ego. It's the ego. It's the very opposite of what we should be doing as Muslims. Very opposite of what we should be doing as people of any religion. Now a major element within the Sufi way is asceticism, which is turning our backs on the material world. Indeed, one theory of the origin of the name Sufi comes from the simple woolen coats its followers wore. In other words, they were turning their back on material wealth and possessions. In contrast, our detractors seem so much a part of the material world, so keen to judge, so keen to proselytise, so adverse to criticising existing economic and power relations. But even this asceticism can reassert the ego, as we feel superior in rejecting the materialism of the world. In other words, we get sucker from just how much suffering we can put up with. Just as an overemphasis on Sharia and the scriptures leads to a similar sense of superiority, Indeed, we have a saying that those who recite Al-Quran, it do often doesn't go below their throats. In other words, those who seem the most pious may be furthest move, removed from God, because religion comes from the heart. As Sufis, we must remain within the world, but not of the world. Uh, the Sufi way. Sufism is really the spiritual side of Islam, or if you like, the internal side of Islam. So there's an argument that we're all Sufi, or alternatively, that none of us are, that we're simply Muslim. 
Indeed, in many countries with a high proportion of Sufis, especially somewhat isolated from the world, and I've heard the story about Senegal, but that there's many other places it could be, people simply describe themselves as Muslim and have no concept that there are alternative ways in Islam. Whereas the side of Islam which focuses on the material is regulated through Sharia, uh, this is the external side of Islam. I should add to my non-Muslim viewers that I simply mean the framework by which we should lead our lives, not the barbaric punishments common in the Middle East and some other parts of the Islamic world. So Sufism and Sharia are two sides of the same coin. We cannot have one without the other. A Sufis has a duty to seek knowledge, to seek understanding. So for us to study things like Shams al-Marif is an obligation, whereas our detractors ban the book and condemn its study. But I've overemphasized the spiritual side of Islam at the expense of Sharia. Indeed, I've got a confession to make. When on holiday or when in Jakarta, which I am now, I do drink alcohol. Only beer and not that regularly, but I do drink it. Yes, alcohol is haram, i.e. forbidden, but so too is usury. And I see money itself as usury, as it's no longer backed by anything physical. In other words, fiat currency, I see as being usury. In my mind, I've seen alcohol, alcohol as less important as usury. Uh, but then I firmly believe that it's not for me to judge the severity of my misdemeanours, as this is Allah's domain. Indeed, this is what I call shirk. It doesn't matter what others have done, even provoked you to do, as Allah will judge us all on our intentions, and only on our intentions, not the influence of others. So I must balance my faith, not overemphasize the spiritual of it, nor the Sharia. I fooled myself that professing my fa pray, faith, praying five times a day, providing charity, fasting during Ram Ramadan, and holding an intention to perform Hajj is enough. But to truly submit, I must also follow Sharia. And maybe that doesn't mean that I'll give up alcohol altogether. Uh, but I must stop judging my actions by reference to the actions of others. Love and the light. The Sufi way is the way of love, love of Allah, love for all of Allah's creation. Whereas those attacking seem to be fearful of me and my opinions, this fear leads to mistrust. And all this can lead to a desire to control others and ultimately even hatred. Indeed, religion without spirituality is an uninspired path a path dominated by the ego, which is why religions professing love so often seem to be professing hatred. So I must avoid this trap as behaving as others do towards me, including those using black magic, whilst not in any way feeling superior to them. The only possible path is the path of love. And many times I have mentioned the light of love and bliss, and once you've found this light, Nothing else matters, but I do have to keep reminding myself of this. I have to love those who attack me, including those using black magic. In all likelihood, they've been overtaken by a jinn, or, or, or certainly uh, there is something within their mind that isn't right. And their real crime is allowing this to happen. Uh, for now, their actions do not appear to be their own. I'm not saying they don't have free will. They had free will in allowing the jinn to enter them. But now they possibly don't. But you see, I have found the light. And I've got no excuse not to use it. No excuse not to use love. To descend to defending myself comes from another place, which is very dark. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this vlog, and if you have, can you help me out a little? 
subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and then you'll be notified of future vlogs. But also hit the like button and make a comment. Uh, because these seem to be what determine the um, YouTube algorithm and I'm being really punished by it. So whatever help I can get from you is, is so appreciated, it really is. I'm when I started this I was going to do it uh, this this section the real magic of Java I was going to issue maybe t every two three months now it's it's happening maybe every two or three days so yeah if you hit the bell you'll hear about it um, and thank you so much thank you for listening really heartfelt thanks <laughs>